Welcome everyone to notifications at the University of Edinburgh, a FISON case study. We have Duncan McGrew and Chris Beach. Take it away. Thanks very much, Jen. So um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this presentation for FISON at the University of Edinburgh. So it's our, our notification service. Uh, today I'd like to go into a bit of background about the service. So what, what it is and why we've created it the way we have. I'd like to explore some of the use cases that we've put together for this, um, some which have been in use already uh, and have been great in terms of uh, student comms and preserving the sanity of our service desks. So some, some good news stories there. There are also some that we haven't yet implemented and some that I don't know if ever will because they, they push the boundaries of what we thought this was going to be for. So hopefully it'll spark a bit of, uh, bit of thought for you if you're thinking about this type of thing too. Um, some of the opportunities and challenges that we face uh, in, in implementing this one in our environment. Uh, and also a little bit about how the university community has responded to our introduction of this notification service as well. Um, once I've just talked about the background and some of the, the sort of more product thinking, um, I'd like to turn over to Chris Beach, who is a developer from uh, Unicorn, who's going to talk about the components of, that comprise Faisan and maybe the future of it, what it means for our incubation and some potential future um, priorities. So as I mentioned, Chris, he is an open source developer with Unicorn Inc. Um, and for my own part, I am the Macro Portal Services Manager at the University of Edinburgh, which means I look, out, look out after the part of our web estate that comprises our U Portal instance, which is called MyEd, um, as well as this notification service called, called Fizan. So that's, that's where we focus in my group. So Fizan, the University of Edinburgh, has been delivering uh, institutional notifications for just over a year now, so since April 2019. And it's built to provide a solution for personalised notifications and emergency comms for multiple channels. So as you can see from the, uh, the diagram, there are multiple sources of information, multiple sources of comms that are coming in. Um, they're being drawn from things as simple as you know, Excel files, but also some smarter things too, some APIs um, and email sources that sort of um, uh, aggregate in the centre and then they're delivered out. Now there's a potential there to deliver to multiple sources. At the moment, our method of delivery is actually through our, our, our portal, through our uPortal MyEd. Um, why, and one of the first things I asked when I got involved in this area, why Paisan? What, what's that all about? Um, it's Scottish, so it's Scottish Gaelic, um, which is a native language, uh, and it means knowing, which leads to sentences like Feskerma is Monsieur Donkoch Hanyal Fisagam, um, which is good afternoon, it's the time zone I'm in now. My name is Duncan, and I have no knowledge with me, um, roughly translating as I don't know, which is definitely what I'm going to say. If you ask me any technical questions, they're going straight to Chris this afternoon. Um, so just to introduce you to the main um, method of delivery then for our, our notification service. This is a screenshot of our U portal instance called again MyEd. Um, the main section we're talking about is up in the top right hand corner. I'll just ring that one uh, in, in red just to, to say what we're talking about. And if you were to be delivered a personalized notification from one of our sources, it would look a bit more like this. So here's an example from another account of someone with a notification to take action on. So what we're doing is people are drawn in to log into our uPortal pretty much daily in order to get their uh, task completion and email and diary and all the things they've got to do to manage their academic life. But there are occasions where we want to draw particular attention to something that a particular person wants to do. So not an announcement to everybody, but something we want to call particular people to, to get done. And that's why we've instated this, this notification service. Just wanted to look through a couple of the use cases now, just to give you an idea of some of the ways that we're uh, making student and staff life better by, by running this service. So first thing that we're doing is making student life easier by alerting students to changes in their exam schedule. So our exam scheduler database uh, is capable of sending notifications out and it sends information to students with the date, time, location of their exam. Particularly important if those details change because sometimes you know a building's not available for some reason. There's you know overrunning works or, or there's an issue with electricity. These kind of things. Um, so you need to let students know if their exams have been moved for any reason. Now those notifications are sent out by bulk by the, the exam scheduler and they're removed once the exams are over. So th th those notifications don't stay for any longer than they need to. Another thing we're looking to do is drive engagement um, with some of our student surveys through personal calls to action. Now, after every one of our credit bearing courses, um, our students have to complete a survey rating the course. Um, this was previously emailed out and we found the response rate was very poor because those emails would tend to languish for a few weeks. Students would ignore them and not think that they were that important and maybe just not check the emails that, that regularly. 
And when we put this one through the notification system, though, it generated around 80,000 notifications in the first month. Now, that's not per person, that I'm glad to say. That's for a total across our student. Um, so there's quite a high volume of things there um, that allow people to, to um, fill in these surveys and response rates have been greatly, greatly increased. Another thing we're looking to do is ensuring that administration tasks are fulfilled. So our accommodations and fees teams use this service to notify uh, students about outstanding fees. So if they've not paid for their accommodation or they've got tuition fees um, that unfortunately we have to charge, um, if they've not been completed, they can supply a list of all the people that have got actions to take within the within the finance systems. Um, those are sent out to, be, to, to students affected and last around 48 hours and then expire. Um, we're not looking to um, uh, surprise any students with this, it's just to let them know that something's happening. By the time they've received this notification, they've already not responded to at least a couple of emails. So this is a kind of a, a further step in order to try and get them to, to complete admin tasks. We also have some use cases for this service within IT. So we're asking people to um, essential task completion routes uh, through distinct prompts for them. Um, due to some of the complex architecture at the University of Edinburgh, um, we're a large devolved organisation, many things don't, don't work quite as you might expect them. Um, when our applicants become students, they need to synchronise their passwords after they register, so there's a, like a click-through process that they have to do. Um, obviously, RIT are able to identify who has not done that, so they, they've got a listing of people that still need to do it. Um, so as per the example I showed before, they, they receive a notification through an API that allows them to say, hey, look, you've got to, to take this distinct uh, thing to do. And that, that is uh, refreshed uh, overnight daily uh, until at least most people have completed that one and then we, we stop notifying them. Um, the other thing we do is to um, keep people aware of big changes. So um, we had a, uh, a regrettable email outage for a few hours in our Office 365 email system, uh, just over a thousand accounts were affected there. Now our normal route to let students know what, what issues on campus is to email them to let them know and then email them again to let them know it's been resolved. Um, now I think you can see the potential flaw in our thinking there because their email was out, so how are we to do this? Uh, instead the listing of people whose uh, accounts were affected and we could generate these as a list. Um, a notification went into the system to say look really sorry your email's out, please don't try and get access, it won't work, please don't um, contact our service desk. Um, and while that was going on, we got about 500 clicks through for extra details about what was going on. That could have been 500 phone calls to our IT desk. Um, I'm glad to say again, we preserved their, preserved their good nature by, by cutting those off before they happened. And then obviously once the um, email problem had been resolved, we can just remove that notification. And students who obviously had logged in got the information they needed. Students who hadn't logged in may never have even known there was a, an issue. So actually, instead of sending those two emails telling them that there's a system out, we could cut those out of their, their life entirely and let them get on with their day. We've also got a couple of proposed use cases we haven't implemented yet, but are somewhat interested in. Um, so we have a new support service aimed at all students at the University of Edinburgh called EdHelp um, that proposes to notify you when a response has been received for your, your query or further information is required, something along these kind of things, that integrates with our kind of uh, customer relationship management software, um, somewhere, somewhere between there and a call management system. Um, this is probably better than emailing students every time something happens, again, because a huge volume of emails is something that our students have let us know that they're, they're not attracted by and it doesn't help them manage their, their lives in a, in a meaningful way. And one that has been proposed that um, actually challenges our thinking a little bit is a national student survey. So this is a little bit different than the course-based survey we talked about before. Um, there's a UK-wide national student survey that, that looks at all aspects of academic life um, around student happiness, student satisfaction, and we ask all of our students to do it, um, but this um, doesn't really meet our, our thinking around notifications because it isn't in any way personalised and it's less time-bound than some of the other ones because if you're thinking about your whole student life, it's less like a notification, this action must be done, because you're still going to be thinking about it, you know, weeks, months later. Um, so we need to get into discussion with our, with our comms guys about exactly what that might mean for us. It is a possibility, but one that we is challenging our kind of strategic thinking about what, what, what a notification, what an emergency communication is. And as I mentioned, you know, the, the challenges we face 
Um, the University of Edinburgh is a very large organisation, um, more than 20,000 students, around more than 10,000 staff, so there's lots of people. Um, and it's a devolved environment, so we've got around 20 schools and colleges that, that can manage their own um, administrative structures. Um, so everybody's kind of different and the communications are devolved. So it's really sometimes difficult to get the right comms to the correct people. So this um, method of kind of personalizing these notifications uh, is really, really useful to us to try and um, generate uh, engagement with, with what we're trying to, to let people know. Um, the other thing is that it's always long been a bit unclear about what, a, what an emergency notification is and who should be able to, to press the, the big red button that sends it out. So we need to work with our internal comms colleagues again to, to work out an exact structure for precisely what this means. The other thing I find is that people tend, because these notifications are delivered with our uPortal, people equate it with our uPortal and think that it's one giant budget uh, that, that all development should come out of. Um, this is a time of constrained resource, obviously, you know, our, the response to the coronavirus it means that um, belts will be titled uh, tightened everywhere, I think. Um, so we've got to make the case to show that this is the type of thing that can actually save the university money in the long run if, if we digitise more of these processes. And I have to say that everyone who's come on board with us and taken this on has been very receptive. Um, it saved a lot of people time and effort and dealing with communications that can be cut off and, and removed. Um, there are some people within the organization that are enthusiastic champions for us. So some of the people in our applications teams, the zero developers, um, really help to promote it and think about it in, in every project. But I think we need to get the word out there more about what, what, what's, what's capable with it. Um, and our students generally like anything that reduces the number of emails they get because it's easier for them to, to get on with it. Um, as I mentioned, we need to, to show what kind of um, uh, return investment we can do with this thing. My white whale, so this is why we see Ahab on the right, is the library service. It's where I started my career at the university, and I just think there are processes there that could really, really benefit. You have a book due, um, you, a book you've requested to come in, notifications about new products of use to you based on your studies, your school, you think. So I can see lots of, of future um, possibilities uh, for us. But our immediate plans are to improve the display of particularly emergency notifications. Um, we have obviously customised our uPortal uh, front end, so we need to, to um, improve how those look and make it really stand out. And um, we don't have many campus-wide alerts, but when they do, it's important that the message gets out there. And we've also taken on a, a PhD student as a, as a researcher to do some user experience work for us um, around interactions with how these work. So. Um, looking at you know what's what's out there in the market should people be able to dismiss notifications should they be able should they get reminders if they've dismissed and not done anything and um, what route should they be to opt in and opt out what channels should they be these kind of things um, as i say in terms of comm strategies what is a notification why isn't it an email because you can't just lift all the emails and shift them as notifications because it doesn't that doesn't help i guess you're just lifting and shifting the issue somewhere else and as i say we're looking at what other people do so we know that in blackboard learn for example there's lots of notifications a lot of our research says that possibly too many and um, social media some of them do very well some of them don't but uh, and also ios android these these type of notifications um we want to know what works and what doesn't so that we can kind of share that learning and say this is what worked in our, our environment and this is one of the great things i think about working in open source is we can really share that learning with people uh, once we've once we've uh, researched it just to exemplify a couple of things i'm talking about there so at the top version of this one is our current you have a notification i'm not sure it stands out as well as it might so we're exploring the use of you know you know interest in web components as we've been talking about maybe over the last couple of days but something to make it stand out just that little bit better and in terms of once you go to your list of notifications how should this look should it be in categories should it be by importance should it be by date you need to explore a little bit more about how our, how our students want to to work with that one um okay so with that if Chris is there, he's going to give you a little bit of a tour of how this thing is constructed uh, in, the, in the back. Thank you, Duncan. Uh, next slide. All right, so when we talk about kind of the conceptual view of Fiosin and how it fits into the flow, you can look at it as you know, a fancy message queue. Uh, Filesan currently is constructed out of two components, uh, the more of the user interface area and then the microservices area. It's a Spring Java application running on Tomcat. It's backed by a, uh, a, a relational database. Uh, and, and when you take then Filesan and expand it to, you know, who's going to use it, you can 
break them out into two main groups, the producers of notifications and then the subscribers that will consume those notifications. Um, as Duncan has um, had talked about, you know, there's only a few producers known right now. Um, the Filesyn uh, user experience, right? So you can go in and just create a, a notification manually. Um, and then you can also have scheduled jobs, right? They can either be from batch processes from other systems um, hitting the API, or it can be from uh, background tasks. Um, I put these two boxes in the bottom here uh, to start getting you thinking about what else could we use Filesyn for, right? So open Aquella moderation items. Hey, you have an item that needs your review or the, this item's been sitting in a review for, you know, 10 days, you need to go look at it. Uh, or your exam in Sakai, right? You, you know, you, your exam is now graded. You can go take a look at it or whatnot. Um, and then when we look at our subscribers, right? Uh, right now, uh, it's being very heavily used uh, uPortal, right? As a, as a single subscriber entity, and then it, it uh, goes out to many users, right? That are actually gonna be using uPortal. Uh, you can also then do email notifications through like Office 365 and Twilio, or you can do SMS through Twilio. Uh, this is not, of course, the only subscribers, uh, but these are the use cases that have been identified so far. Next slide. So when we look conceptually at, at what makes up Fiosin, right? Let's peel back the technology because you know it's, it's Java and Spring, which is pretty common technology. Um, but what are the, uh, what's the logic behind it? So it all centers around this concept of a notification. And we can see here that users can create notifications, publishers and background jobs can create notifications and notifications are then associated with a group. Going from the other side then on actually receiving notifications, you have users or entities that are subscribers. Subscribers then um, can subscribe to a topic of interest to them or that as part of their university course study that they are required to be in. For, um, for instance, uh, you may be forced to be subscribed to the topic of um, emergency alerts for your campus, but maybe not emergency alerts for a satellite campus. And then there's a relationship between groups and topics to have that tie-in so the notifications get to the right subscribers. Next slide, please. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be using that conceptual flow. We're going to look at a couple screens, uh, screenshots that uh, make up the uh, Fiosin at the University of Edinburgh uh, to give a little bit more kind of real world, um, you know, you can actually see what the thing looks like as we look at the concepts. So here you have the opportunity to look at groups, right? And then like we were talking about, groups can have uh, notifications built off of them. Next slide. Creating a notification is pretty simple, right? Fairly straightforward. It's a basic wizard um, or contribution form. You select your group there. Uh, notice here that the topic is group. Um, I personally think it's in here to make people, you know, have to check themselves, right? But you can have a topic that does a kind of a pass through to the group, but you can have a topic that is not necessarily associated with one group. And then you can have start and end dates, of course, the notifications. Next slide, please. All right, so this is when um, when you want to see who's um, received a notification, right? So we have um, this touches notifications, subscribers, all the way down to the actual user that's, um, that's seeing notifications. When we talk about topics, this gives you an idea of, uh, of what Edinburgh uses for um, or you know, how they utilize their topics, right? So you have career services, accommodation uh, topics, uh, the CEQS, the quality survey, you have your emergency topic, right? Lots of different ones and you can go ahead and create more uh, based on your needs. Okay. In terms of publishers, then you can have, and we'll talk about background jobs in a second, the differences, right? But publishers are able to then push notifications into the notifications backbone, which was originally called Orphiosin. And then we have our subscribers that, um, that is able to pull the notifications out of Fiosin um, and, and actually consume them and do what they will with them. Um, but you can, you're able to, you know, see that um, all the details here inside of Fiosin of who's your subscribers. 
And this is where once you have your subscribers and you have your topics, you have to create a subscription, right? So you just are marrying those two together in, in various forms to make, you know, uh, to set up the business logic of who should be receiving what notification. Right. And then we also have the idea of background jobs in, in Fiosin where uh, it's able to run in a kind of an automated fashion. You kind of set it and forget it, but it will go ahead and send out uh, in kind of personalized notifications, if you will, right? The idea being that we don't want just some blanket notification to go out and it might not be useful to you. So the background job can understand, you know, whose exam is due or, you know, maybe, you know, just anything that has to do with users um, and they can tailor it and then send that notification out. And then really the end user experience is the end goal for all of this, right? We wanna be able to get some sort of personalized information to the user in a timely fashion and for them to actually be able to see it, right? And so this is uh, you know, essentially the same screenshot that Duncan had at the end where he was talking about you know, how it looks at the University of Edinburgh. This is our end goal, right? Uh, this is looking at through my ed, but also getting it through a text message or an email um, is really the, the whole point of Fiosin. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the community. Um, it's a young one, right? It's a, I think it's a cool project. Um, I'm here talking about it. Uh, I know that Duncan and I have had some interesting discussions on it uh, and we're excited to have more people involved in the community to start really growing it out. Next slide. Uh, so there's another adopter that, um, that we know about that uses Fiosin. It's a state center over in um, California. Uh, they're running a fork of Fiosin in production. Uh, their phase one feature set was focused on uh, emergency notifications, right? They had, a, they had a constrained development budget to get Fiosin working for them. Uh, and so they chose to focus on emergency notifications. They've enabled local police departments to be able to send out ner uh, emergency notifications through Fiosin um, that then gets to all their users. And they um, they took the you know, the uh, the community version of Fiosin and they improved it. Um, actually, Unicon helped them improve it to to get better performance um, and then better logging. So when something is not quite what you think it should be, uh, you're able to dig into the logs and see what's going on. Uh, when we talk about, you know, the, the size that they're doing, uh, they sent through a few metrics that they were willing to share. They said that their, their largest college batch of notifications was over 30,000 text messages for a single location. Uh, they said that they've had multiple like large location jobs running concurrently in production. Um, and when their police departments do test runs in productions, it's shy of, or it's shy of about 100,000 text messages um, since those locations run right after another. Uh, so there's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of possibility for, you know, at scale notifications. Um, but of course, you don't have to. You can do it small to a department, but it can scale out. Next slide. So I captured this picture to help give a visual. Right, this is one of our uh, one of my um, one of my squash vines um, out on my farm, and I just saw that and it just got me thinking. This is a young community, um, but it can grow into something really cool. Um, so if you're interested in Fiosin, if you have a need for notifications. Uh, consider taking a look at this project. Uh, Duncan is a really great guy to talk to um, and really understand his, um, his mindset behind what makes notifications work for them. I'd be happy to talk about Fiosin, um, you know, as it gets a little more technical and, and we can see if Fiosin's right for you. And with that, we'll just open it up to any questions. So I'm looking at the chat here. Oh, it looks like you've already answered some of them, Duncan. Yeah, I was trying to do too much at once. That's why your slides went on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I think, uh, I mean, one of the, the questions there was just about other, other ways of putting this out there. So for example, like social media. Um, I think SMS is one of the, the main ones that State Center, I'm not familiar with their, their solution at the moment. Love to, love to hear more about them. 
uh, but they're using SMS at the moment, I think. Uh, and just to say that we're exploring, I think, how we can do text messaging and WhatsApp messaging as well, um, because it's one that our internal communicators want to use. Um, and so do our academics, actually, just in terms of, you know, this tutorial has changed, you know, checking in on people in terms of, of pastoral work. Um, so one we want to do, and our current solution for this, which is delivered by Blackboard, I think they're actually winding this one down at the end of July. So it presents an opportunity to, to hopefully um, gain some importance with it. Um, and in terms of Jim's question here, notifications tied to groups. So I think what Chris is showing there is our kind of back end like manual process. So if you're like, I want to message everybody in um, the web team, if that makes sense, you can send it to that a group based on like an, like an LDAP presence, like a, like a, from our ID systems. But some of the smarter links um, are delivering them to individual people. So that one about exam scheduler, for example, it knows that you are a person, Duncan, you are on philosophy 101, your exam is this, and it will only deliver you the ones kind of for you. Um, the library's uh, service at the moment, it sends, it, it's clever enough to be able to send out emails. So it just sends you an email saying, you know, this book has been recalled, this is what's due, you owe us money if you've been naughty. Um, so I, I don't think it's, it shouldn't be insurmountable to, to be able to hook those two up, um, but it's not one we've, we've done yet. I guess people must, must be reading their emails in that, um, uh, in that zone. Um, so it, hopefully it'd be sm hopefully smarter than you just, you have a book to be able to tell you what it is and when it's due. Um, the kind of some of our challenges there are some of our books are very high demand and actually are due back every three hours. So I, I don't know how the scheduler and the library systems would, would, would deal with this, but it'd be really interesting to, to have a look at. Um, I think Aaron was asking about analytics. Um, so obviously we've got um, web analytics in our case, Google Analytics running on our, um, our presence there. So we do get information about what everybody does in there. So the number of people doing and interacting with them. Um, and you also get a like obviously a rate at which people are, for example, syncing their library account. You get to see th these group of people were notified. Now it's this. Now it's this. Obviously, you have to say it's not all cause and effect because people could be um, syncing their syncing their accounts uh, without having seen that notification. But it gives you an idea sometimes of engagement. Yes, I don't know what that would look like once you go to the world of WhatsApp and SMS. It's a little bit more of a dark, a dark zone. Um, but certainly within using it within uPortal, you get, you get some, some pretty um, enlightening stuff, definitely. Um, Andre's asking, how do students enroll in SMS notifications? Yeah, so it's not university-wide. It tends to be more um, sort of course to course. Their, their, their lecturer will ask them to fit, fill in a form more or less with their mobile number on it. All done in strictest data protection uh, standards, just to, just to get that one uh, uh, off the bat, but it's not done university wide. So we couldn't, for example, email all of our, uh, we couldn't SMS all of our students at once. We wouldn't have their permission to do that, um, but we can email them. Uh, uh, for, I think the forms are on the web, but. Yeah, for State Center, uh, they actually tied it into their uPortal um, uh, kind of user preferences. So there's a communication preferences uh, dialogue or screen in in State Center's U portal that you can go ahead and opt into various topics or groups. Um, but then there's some that of course, like the emergency ones that you're, you're required to be in until they take you out of based on your enrollment. And yeah, no, that, that push for just to come back to Aaron again, sorry. Yeah. I see that your, 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 your administrative staff like to see whether people have seen emails or not. Um, definitely one we see from our, our management groups. Yeah, definitely to, to, just, I think as well, it's not all about just getting the money as well. It's making sure people are okay in some of these circumstances, because if they're just ignoring everything from us, then it's, then it's a cause for concern that goes to our kind of more, more counseling and support groups, to be honest. And Julian, did we watch a test with mobile push platforms? Um, so our, uh, our new portal doesn't run as an app. I don't know, you know, you have this um, sort of, uh, Chris is probably a better act to answer this than me, these kind of progressive web apps that can do push notifications would be great. Um, and I don't know, Julian, do you mean in terms of our UX research about these, these mobile pushes? Because again, we're, we're looking at how people interact with phone operating systems, definitely. Um, but some, I, I, I'm horrified when I look at people's mobile phones and you see 250 email four from your settings and eight from whatever else i can't i can't bear it I, like what what do you do that day but 
people don't all organize their life like I do. This is one of the things I've, I've, I've learned in these, uh, in these tests. Um, so we're, we're doing that interviewing and um, research now. Um, we'd be really happy to share it in the, in the repositories that Chris mentioned once we've written it up. I don't know if anyone has any other questions or are we going to get timed out here, Jen? Well, I mean, we'll we'll need to exit momentarily. If there, you've got a couple minutes until um, the next next session. I see you've you've dropped some garlic into the chat as well, Jen. That's <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, yeah, I have a question. If if a user has multiple uh, notifications, do they like in U Portal? Will they just sort of pop up one below the other, and then the person would then have to dismiss them? How, how would that um, work? So what you would get is, you know, the, the, the small bell sorry, uh, item um, would just have a number. Instead of one, it would have two, three, four, and it, they would show in a concurrent list. Um, at the moment, in our um, instance, you can't dismiss. So that's one of the things we want to look at. Like, when should you be able to dismiss? I, I tend to think you should, um, because you can in other platforms. But at the moment, you can't dismiss. It sits there until either you've taken the action, so that is you've gone and you know, think renewed your library book or um, you've, your exam's finished or whatever it is. Um, I, I think you should be able to dismiss them. And that's, that's the point at which they would, they would go away. But at the moment, they're, they're sort of either time or action bound in our instance. All right, thanks. That, yeah, thanks. But for sure, I want to understand how people would want to interact with those. Does that make sense? Because I think... I think you just dismiss them on social media, sort of Facebook, just by looking at them, except if it's a friend request, in which case you have to take an action. And I, I want to understand what, what, what areas of student life or, or staff admin people would want to be able to do that with, because I suspect, I don't know, but my I kind of hypothesize, it might not be one size fits all. I just, that's a guess. Um, if, any, if no one else has got anything else then, thanks very much, Jim. Thanks again for, for asking those questions. It's been great to talk about uPortal and, and notifications this week with you. It's been great. Thanks, Duncan and Chris. Appreciate your time. Thank you, folks.